Awesome. Good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us this evening for our November meetup, and, and which is all about, again, Azure, and this one's about Azure Machine Learning. Thanks again for being with us. As a usual agenda, so we're going to talk about the upcoming events in, uh, around the developers and Azure events. And then we go through what's new inside the um, Azure, data pla Azure platform since the last time we met. And then we have the main session with Jackie all about the productionizing machine, Azure machine learning, uh, machine learning using Azure machine learning. Around the upcoming events, uh, similar to previous months, we have another free events running by Microsoft, modernizing web apps and data uh, with uh, Microsoft Azure. Full free for two days, it's running for two days, and there are still two more course and rounds going on this year. One is scheduled for November 19 and 20, and one for December 7 and 8 of December. They are fantastic uh, free events. If you want to know more about Azure, Azure Pass services, and how you can modernize your workloads and migrate your admin workloads to Azure services. So it gives you also a bit of background about the Azure services. You get a glimpse of uh, using DevOps and how you can deploy um, services using the DevOps services. And around there, basically give you an idea about end-to-end -end solution, how you can modernize uh, your, your workload in, in, on Microsoft Azure. So let's talk about the announcement for this month, since last time we met at the beginning, at the almost beginning of the October, a couple of things went into public preview. Yep. Azure Cognitive Services Q&A Maker. So Microsoft is offering another managed uh, services for this uh, Q&A Maker. Q&A Maker is part of the Cognitive Services, which now offers a new managed version of that one along with a couple of cool capabilities. One is to simplify the deployment and resources by reducing the number of resources you need to deploy. And basically, when you go with the managed services, there is a new checkbox with the uh, called manage. And as soon as you check that one, so it uh, form the the provisioning form will uh, set up all the required resources for you. Another uh, new capability added to this one is the precise answering called precise answering which is precise phrases and short answer extraction from long answers passage to deliver more accurate and user-friendly answers. This new feature gives the flexibility to you to either choose the precise answers to answer the passage based on the confidence score of a short answer or long answer. So you have that flexibility to answer, to decide which answer should go to the end user. Another enhancement added is the deep learned ranker with the enhanced uh, relevance of the results across all supported language, uh, as long as, uh, for all the language supported by Azure Cognitive Services and inside the Q&A Maker. So mm, mm, it's again for providing more accurate result to end user by a new, what they call L2 ranker, introduced to the service, which is a deep learning based transformer model that improves the precision of the service for all the supported language. So it's another cool enhancement to this Q&A service for the knowledge management. And another enhancement uh, added to the service is end-to-end -end, uh, region uh, and end-to-end -end scenario is supported to more region, added to more region included central US, north, uh, central US, North Europe, and luckily we get that in Australia East region as well, which now you can start provisioning and test that service in Australia. Another uh, announcement in the public preview is app service with the support for JBoss and 
enterprise application uh, platform support. In partnership with Red Hat, Microsoft has a very long uh, footprint in, log in partnership with Red Hat after releasing the OpenShift and Red Hat for Enterprise Linux. In Microsoft Azure platform, now they are offering the JBoss Enterprise application support on Azure App Service, which is fully pass service, uh, one of the pass services of the Microsoft Azure, which and gives you the capability to run your JBoss applications within the app service, which is pretty cool. And now you can deploy your VAR files or even EAR files applications using as an app service deployment APIs or even using any CICD pipelines to do that one. And you can benefit from all the features and capabilities of the app services like auto scaling, networking, enabled applications, authorizations, if you want, uh, for example, integration with the MSI or Azure AD and all the cool features available in the app service will be available to you for your JBoss applications. During the private preview, they are supporting JBoss 7.2, uh, which is available at the moment in the preview, but later on, probably in the coming months, there, there is a plan to add Java 11 also to the full set. Another announcement is that around the Azure Functions, which is very, very cool and pretty cool. One of the very latest features available in the Azure Serverless platform, which gives you the capability to open your skeleton of the Azure Functions and build your Azure Functions infrastructure by importing the Open API spec, which you can use Visual Studio Code for that one. And you can generate a function app by simply importing the Open API spec using that extension within the Visual Studio code, uh, or even you can use the command line. And this, uh, the, by using that, uh, it automatically um, builds the skeleton and infrastructure of required APIs, which you need inside the Azure function, and generates all the necessary functions for your APIs, which you can later on add the business logic to that one. C Sharp, Python, Java, and TypeScript are supported at the moment, and there is a plan for PowerShell and JavaScript to join to this full set as well, which is in which they are coming also. And yeah, so Azure API management also using the same feature inside the Azure API management for mm, mm, very similar feature, which you can also generate Azure functions using API management extension for um, inside the Visual Studio code. It's a, it's a still in experimental, but uh, it, it's very helpful to scaffold all the necessary functions for your APIs based on their definitions. And once it's generated, then you can add the business logic later on to that foundation and to, and to that skeleton, which is deployed into, into the Microsoft Azure, which is, again, another pretty cool feature added to the serverless uh, space uh, on the Microsoft Azure platform. Another cool feature added to the past services is with the Azure Event Hubs, and it's uh, basically it's adding the schema registry feature uh, to this service. So uh, it's a new feature added to the event hub called uh, a schema registry, which uh, provides a central repository for managing uh, all the schema documents for event-driven and messaging-based uh, applications, where the event or message payload uh, contains a structured data that either um, and being deserialized or serialized by the consumer or the, by the provider, uh, which both of them you need to have access to that schema, or uh, when both communicating party need to validate the integrity of the data or the payload with a particular schema, uh, which this feature gives both of them uh, this case, uh, availability of the schema to be managed in the central place and available to both parties. It also simplifies um, the governance framework and reusability of the schema and defines the relationship between a schema um, through a schema groups, which is another uh, sub features of these uh, small features. So it's in preview. You can start using that one. 
Uh, but it's on. It's only available in the standard and dedicated tiers. It's not available in the basic tier of the event hub. Just bear that mind. Another pri private preview announcement is for application insight. Um, Australia Central One is added and supported with this with this application insight, which is again another cool feature for for us here in Australia. Another private preview is Azure Database for MySQL uh, flexible server tier. And basically, it's in public preview, and um, it's for my uh, Azure Database for MySQL. And um, by using this tier and this SQ, um, this supports asynchronous replication of the data from one source up to 10, 10 replicas in the same region. And this feature is very useful for um, very heavy read-only work workloads to easily scale out the and balance across the replicas and across the servers and according to your preferences and how you want to scale uh, the balance and workload, um, which is again very um, pretty cool for um, a scaling application from the data perspective. Another um, preview announcement is around the Azure SQL DB. Audit, um, one feature is added called Audit for Support Actions. This feature basically enables you to track and audit all the support operations done by Microsoft engineers during a support request. And basically, it gives access to the logs of the servers and all the databases. Um, as long as that request is open and Microsoft engineers are working on your request. For both of the Azure SQL DB paths and managed services, this feature is available. So at the moment, they are only supporting log analytics and um, event hubs, but uh, exporting the logs into the storage account also is in the plan and coming in the coming months. Another feature is, again, around the Azure SQL DB, which is, this, which, called this, which is about supporting distributed transaction across uh, multiple managed instances. So this is very useful for um, app applications which are um, going to be migrated to the Microsoft Azure, but requires distributed applications capability because it used to be available in the um, on-prem uh, and Azure probably uh, SQL Server Enterprise versions. Uh, or when you, uh, when you want to develop new applications started on the Microsoft Azure platform, uh, but you want to benefit from the data partitioning and um, when you want to partition the data into multiple databases and overcome with the sizing limit of the managed instance at the moment. So this and this capability of using distributed transaction is pretty cool. It's also supported in the T-SQL or in the .NET Core, you can use the transaction scope class for uh, using that one on the Azure SQL DB managed instances. Another, uh, yep. So, so far, these are the public preview announcements for this month. Any questions before we go to GA? No? Cool. So, a couple of announcements for GA. I can't access. The chat box, I don't see the chat box, so if there is any question there, let me know or let one of, let Simon or Afat know, and probably they can, yeah, raise it. Arafat says he can say. Yeah. Couple of announcements uh, in the, and couple of things went into GA. The first, one of the first one is the Azure Monitor uh, with the application inside support for Java version three agent. Basically, this feature is about uh, adding availability of the Java version three agent for the Azure Monitor app inside module. 
And regardless of the environment you are hosting your Java application, it can be inside the VM, it can be on-prem connected to the Microsoft Azure, it can be inside the AKS, or wherever you host your application, uh, Java application inside the Microsoft Azure, Java Tree Agent monitors your application by auto-instrumentation and without any code changes um, required. It also enables powerful functionality similar to the same functionality which we get around the .NET applications by collecting a wide range of requests, telemetries, dependencies, logs, and um, also supports many popular libraries and frameworks um, like a gRPC, Kafka, or those um, popular libraries um, which might be used inside your uh, your Java application. So this agent, uh, by availability of these agents, we can bring all those telemetry into the app application inside for future use and for future analysis. Another f uh, announcement uh, in GA is uh, support of the Java 11 with the Azure functions. Java 11 supports in Azure function is added in both consumptions and premium plans, and it's available for both of the platform, Linux or Windows. So um, you, now you can write your Azure function using Java 11 um, features and language. Another cool announcement is the uh, Microsoft adding the dev test pricing for the new um, app service P2 and the new plan which they announced at the Ignite called uh, P3. Uh, so they announced PV version 3 at the Ignite and PV version 2 also available. So by this discount rate, rate announcement uh, on Apple service, uh, you can um, um, basically get a huge saving when using the app service in the dev test subscriptions. And, but it's different based on the OS and based on the region you are going to use the, um, the app service. So for Windows, for example, you can get up to 64% um, discount. And for the Linux uh, app services, you can get up to 27% discount, which is, which is huge when you are working on the dev test subscription uh, for your dev test workloads as well. AKS got a cool um, features in the GA, which is supporting the spot instances. Azure Spot Instance, with Azure Spot Instances, you can leverage uh, lower cost compute based workload based on the availability in that particular region. And basically, it's all, it's all about using that reserve safe space from that region for the compute resources. And as long as it's available, so you can use leverage that uh, capacity for your uh, specific type of the workload, uh, which normally is good. Uh, uh, when 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 um, re um, guaranteed compute is not required for that type of the workload. For example, you want to have a batch processing, or you want to have a machine learning training um, uh, workloads for uh, which needs to be um, started, uh, do some processing, and at the end kill the compute resources. Uh, as long as it's, uh, the guaranteed work, compute work um, is resources is not required, so this uh, space, uh, this feature is uh, pretty cool, which is now available in the AKS, and you can have uh, you can benefit from significant saving of the compute resources for your AKS workloads by using a spot instances in a particular node pool. Another one is uh, AKS uh, Proximity Placement Group. Play, uh, proximity Placement Group is already available on the virtual machines, and now it's been extended and expanded to support AKS node pools also. And basically, it's all about um, uh, adding a logical grouping capability around all those virtual machines, um, which can decrease the inter-VNet connectivity and latency. So we in virtual machines are deployed within the same proximity placement group, means they are physically located as close as possible inside that data center, 
which uh, will result in the lowest latency bit, uh, when, the, when those no node pools need to communicate with each other. Another uh, announcement is around app service again, which uh, after a uh, bunch of other services, and now private endpoints is available for app service. Private endpoints is uh, another cool service in Azure which enables you to consume Azure resources completely private within your virtual network uh, by, a, by a very specific private IP and basically in, make them only accessible from inside the virtual network uh, access to those Azure resources or cross VNets which they are peer um, with each other. And it's very good for eliminating uh, the resource and the data exposure to the public internet. Uh, Azure App Service supports for private endpoints uh, is now GA, available in all regions, I believe. Yes, and for both Windows and Linux uh, platforms, it's also available. Mm. But it's also it's only available in the premium V2 plans, premium V3 plans, and Azure Functions Elastic Premium plans. So it's not available in the standard plans or basic and free tiers of the app service. So you need to use this uh, specific app service plans for this particular feature um, for using the private endpoints. Azure Blob Storage uh, got another feature added called Pointing Time Restore. Pointing Time Restore is a new feature in the Blob Storage, which uh, adds the continuous data protection to the Blob data by providing the restoration capability back to any specific date and time you want. And basically how it works is it's periodically, periodically um, take a snapshot of your Blob data and uh, it's very useful for customers who want to protect and recover from accidental um, damage or accidental deletion or accidental modification of their data. Or for example, in such a scenarios, like you have a load testing and during that load testing, you modify a huge uh, block blob of the storage and you want to revert back before running, before the next uh, rerun. So this is a cool capability which enables that one for um, restore um, in time for um, a storage account or even you can apply at the container level also. These are um, GA announcements with the specific view useful for the developers. So any questions around this? No? Okay, so a couple of deprecations being announced. First one is Azure Red Hat OpenShift 3.1. Uh, so it's going to retire by June 2022. So for existing clusters of version 3.11, so you can still provision cluster with this version 3.11. And they can, uh, you can continue using that one until the retirement date. But after that time and uh, in the retirement date, they will be shut down and they will be no, uh, they, they won't be accessible for you. So, and the recommendation uh, is to start uh, using, for the new workloads, I start using OpenShift version four, which is available in the Microsoft Azure. And for existing workload, start testing and transitioning from 3.11 to version 4 and to make sure your application is capable uh, to work and function with the new version. Another deprecation is the Azure App Service. Uh, so coming in with the PHP 7.4 support. Community support for PHP 7.4 is ending on 28th of November 2020, so you, in two years time, in, in PHP 7.4 extended support on Windows also will end at the same time, and any applications hosted on the Azure platform that are that is using this version 
will be unsupported. So as a result, it's recommended to use the most recent version available in the Microsoft Azure from that PHP, which is at the moment PHP version 8, and Microsoft Azure supports that one. So now you got plenty of time to, but it's only available on the Linux at the moment for the app service. Windows version is coming, but it's a good plenty of time for you to start testing the transition from existing versions of PHP 7.4 to version 8 and make sure your application is compatible. Another deprecation announcement is for API management dev portal, but the legacy one. So around a year ago, Microsoft added a new um, experience of the dev portal to API management, and which is very cool, which is very customizable, flexible, and um, it offers many improvements over the legacy portal. Uh, and but uh, by October 2000, but by October 2023, the legacy portal will be retired, and it's recommended to start using the new portal and work out on the uh, transitioning from the legacy portal to the new one. A transition instructions from the how you can transition from the old portal to the new portal is provided by Microsoft. So you can go to that instructions and do how uh, and go, and see how you can um, do that migration work. Another deprecation announcement is uh, for Azure SQL uh, DB, Azure DB for uh, SQL, and basically access to import and export data API will be retired by October 2023. So access to import export data to um, import export API to basically import export data to and from Azure SQL DB. Now there are direct endpoints and direct APIs from the service which you can use, uh, but by 2023, it will be stopped and not supported. And the recommendation way is to start using the ARM API, the equivalent ARM APIs available or from the portal or from the PowerShell or another uh, utility for like a SQL package.exe also supports uh, that one and the new version um, internally calls the ARM APIs. This is the recommended. So if your application are using these APIs, direct endpoints, that's the best time for starting the transition plan and work out in, in replacing those APIs with the ARM APIs. Another deprecation is happening on the AKS and on the containerization space inside the Azure, and it's for Azure Dev Spaces. Uh, a new developer tooling is introduced by Microsoft Teams in the container space called Breeze to Kubernetes. Uh, basically, this is a new tool which provides an improved experience from the, develop, from the developer experience uh, with enhanced capabilities um, comparing to the Dev spaces. And basically, it's an iterative development tool available in the Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. So you can use, you can still use both uh, Dev um, IDEs. Uh, but this new Dev tooling allows any developers to write, test, and debug in any code in, in, in using their local machine. But, uh, but uh, still consuming the configuration and the dependencies of the actual Kubernetes environment, similar to what the dev space is doing partially. Recommendation again is to transitioning from the using dev spaces to this uh, bridge to Kubernetes, and by 2023, by October 2023. Any projects is using the dev spaces will no longer function. So still plenty of time to for transitioning from dev spaces to bridge for bridge to Kubernetes project. So these are the deprecation announcement for Azure environment and a couple of toolings, APIs, and services also. Any questions? Microsoft also added a new, um, um, it's not 
kind of a service, but they uh, enhance the computer vision, which is part of the cognitive services, by a new feature called human parity in image captioning. Basically, it's an enhanced image captioning model, an AI system built by Microsoft uh, researchers that uh, how they describe it is uh, it generates caption for any image and basically they say it's more accurate than any description that human or people write for that particular image, which is kind of interesting. And it's a big milestone for Microsoft also for pushing their products and, and make, it, make them more inclusive and accessible for all um, users across the globe. And they are already commercialized for the developers. So you can start using that one as part of the cognitive services. And it's already being used in a bunch of Microsoft products and services already. And the last link is, uh, as usual, in joining to the monthly the, the developer monthly community newsletter. A great effort by Simon and the team in, in Microsoft. And basically, it's providing you a tailored version of what's happening in the community and the great posts and sharing with you all the great content generated in, within the community. And it's a very good way to stay, um, keep you up to date uh, with the evolving technologies happening in the developer work uh, space. You can get notified from the happening events and many other cool things you can you can you you get in a very short version of a newsletter every month. So that's pretty cool. If you are not joined, I strongly recommend to join that one. Any questions so far? Oh. No? If no, we take probably five minutes break. And then we hand over to Jackie for to talk about uh, their experience at the Vector AI, which is their startup and basically how they use Azure Machine Learning and um, to productionizing their ML workload. So uh, Jackie is a founder of Vector AI and you can go check their product and um, Jackie can talk more about in details about that one for us. Thank you. <laughs>